Good evening, everyone. Glad you found us for our online midweek service. If you would take a moment, please use that QR code to register your attendance. We would appreciate that if you would include everybody that's attending too. If you are a regular viewer, glad to have you back. If you are tuning in for the first time or are a regular viewer and there is something that we can do to assist you, please let us know. If you're home sick and not able to come this evening, we hope you heal up quickly. And it'll be great to see you back here in, at church. Let's get going with our opening song. Come to Calvary's holy mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Hear a pure and healing fountain, blows for you, for me, for all. In a full perpetual time, open when our Savior We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 41. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, A deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friends in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up, that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemies will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we continue with our Lenten journey, we are looking at hymn 430, my song is love unknown and focusing in on a, on a specific verse each and every evening. So tonight in the second stanza of my song is love unknown writer Samuel Crossman 
poetically expresses the amazing truth that Jesus willingly left his father's throne to take on human flesh and bring about the salvation of a lost mankind. He sees in Jesus, my friend, who at my need his life did spend. We reflect on that selfless sacrifice of our Lord. We continue with our passion according to St. Mark, picking it up in chapter 9, verse 30. They went on from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
to you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So, today our sermon title, Sustained in Sickness, boy, <laughs> this could have some double meaning for sure. Well, Miriam Webster's defines sustained as maintained at length without interruption or weakening. So sustained in sickness certainly could mean continually ill with no hope or relief of change. Boy, that takes me back to 1986 to the British band. It's immaterial. Their debut al album was Life's Hard and Then You Die. <laughs> Maybe some of you remember that. Now, there's a depressing, hopeless thought shared by some. However, I think what the author of the title of our sermon series today, and even King David in his beautiful Psalm 41, didn't have hopelessness or pointlessness in mind when they talked about sustained sickness. The Lord is the one that can sustain in sickness, and he sustains not only in sickness, but also in all aspects of life. King David writes in Psalm 41, Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. And you do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. That final verse 3 is the basis for our message today. Sustained in sickness, restored to full health. Sounds like that would be an ideal situation, right? <laughs> but I think we need to be careful not to take this psalm as a two-step process and immediately connect this to happening to those that are blessed. We know how that works after all, <laughs> and we'll unpack that a little bit more as we get through this sermon. This evening, we continue our Lenten journey through Psalm 41, and it has been a rather rough Lent so far. Last week, I filmed the Ash Wednesday sermon for you starting around 2 p.m. I promised Sydney that we would have it done by 3 o'clock, laugh out loud. <laughs> After filming, I went back into my office to continue to wrap up some things before the 4.30 service would begin. And of course, I flipped over to social media, Facebook, and saw some interesting posts for sure. Something was not quite right. And of course, you know what I'm talking about, the end of the Super Bowl festivities downtown at Union Station. Obviously, my sermon at 4030 was drastically different than the one that was online. Lord, have mercy. Certainly hard to make sense of the day as we celebrated the Chiefs' Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, and Ash Wednesday. At times, for sure, it's very hard to understand what happens in this life. Things can be challenging, like that day for sure. But we do remember Proverbs 3, verse 5, right? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Yeah, sometimes that's easier said than done, but we do have to trust in the Lord. Similarly, it's hard to make sense of Psalm 41, especially like verse 9, for example. Even my close friends, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. King David's original hearers probably had someone in mind. David's enemies were numerous, and David certainly brought some of that onto himself. But there were also those that King David did show mercy and love and compassion to. And apparently that love was not reciprocated. So-called friends were his enemies. Hard to make sense of why David's friends would betray him in such a way. 
Similarly, it is hard to make sense of this verse even today, as we know the one that betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ, Judas Iscariot. He was the one that dipped his bre bread with Jesus. He is the one that broke bread with Jesus. He was one of Jesus' closest followers, one of his disciples, one of his friends. How could Judas Iscariot, one of these greatest friends of Jesus, betray him? Betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Lord, have mercy. Ah, but we do know a little about betrayal, don't we? Try as we might, our betrayal of Jesus runs deep. At times, our repentance is really just lip service at best. We are those whitewashed walls at times, hiding our sins, but our sickness runs deep, deeper than we care to even admit. Fortunately for us, King David bails us out with verse 3. The Lord sustains him in his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. Fortunately, our God always comes through for you and for me too. Jesus is our great physician. He is the healer of our souls. Our sins are healed even restored and removed. Jesus is the one that we need in our lives because, after all, he sustains you and me in all things. You and I need Jesus every day, every hour, every minute, every moment. And he does sustain us at all times. In fact, he gives us so much more. He sustains us to be his hands and feet in this life. As long as he allows us to serve us in this life, we should joyfully and happily serve him. We have been called to this blessed life, even when it makes no sense to it all, us at all. But our daily events in our lives are always working for his good purposes in this life. His ways are not our ways, but they certainly are meant for his purposes in this life. Dr. Seleska writes on Psalm 41, For David in Psalm 41, salvation has an angle that Christians sometimes fail to see. It is the salvation delivered to the poor by those who care for them. I think this certainly can be true. Typically, when we use the term salvation, especially for those that are watching a midweek Lenten service online, you have an understanding of that churchy word salvation, right? Salvation is what Jesus did for you and for me on the cross. He defeated sin, death, and the power of the devil. We know and understand that's how salvation works for you and for me. However, as Dr. Seleska invites us to contemplate in this psalm, is how is Jesus using us to deliver salvation to those that are around us? How we care for and take care of one another. I am sure we could come up with countless examples from our online viewers of how this works. Whether it's at St. Stephen or King or Kings, our church families, I am sure, are doing exactly that, being the salvific instrument for others, others that need our assistance, our help, and life. Using Psalm 41 in this way helps us understand what it means to be Christ to our neighbor, because in the end, salvation is deliverance, and that is exactly what we all desire, what we all long for. It's what really, truly matters in this life. The world tries to promise this, but can't ever deliver it. Our efforts outside of Jesus would not be able to deliver it either, because salvation, whether it's for you and I, 
putting us in a right relationship or you and I serving those that are around us? Well, that belongs to Jesus and Jesus alone. Kansas City is still trying to make sense of last Wednesday's events, but it will never, ever truly make sense. Elizabeth Lisa Lopez Galvin's 43 years, life was tragically taken in a senseless act of violence on February 14th, 2024, in Kansas City, Missouri, while celebrating her beloved Kansas City Chiefs at the Super Bowl rally. Perhaps some of you have read the obituary, the full obituary. I have seen several people that have actually posted it online. Two things drew my attention. Although Lisa was, like many in our community, an amazing individual from worldly standards, the things that drew my attention were first and foremost, senseless. These words, this word was used to describe her death, and certainly that is how we would describe it from a worldly standard. Hopeless, empty. These are the feelings in which this is communicating to you and to me. But second, Lisa attended Our Lady of Angels grade school and graduated from Bishop Miege High School, remaining an active supporter of her alma mater's sports and fundraising activities. Now this changes perspective, at least it does for me, if indeed she was a servant of the Most High King, and her service was meant to bring salvation to those that she interacted with and touched for sure. Only the Lord knows this, but this is certainly my hope. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Indeed, peace for those that know Christ, but hopelessness for those on the outside looking in, for those that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We are sustained in this life knowing the Lord is working in all things. For this he has promised to you and to me. We are sustained in knowing that no matter what we are enduring, it is also for his purposes in this life. Even when it's beyond our understanding, the Lord sustains us in all things. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue praying Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Angel, whose creature.